Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Sunday service. Uh, it's good to be with you, uh, even though it is still at a distance. Uh, just a couple of notices before I hand over to Mike Acaster, who's leading our service today. Uh, the first thing is to say that um, the Christian Aid uh, are, uh, have a petition on their website. Um, that's a petition to ask uh, the government to cancel all the debt repayments for 2020 for the world's poorest countries. So the countries which will uh, eventually have their economies decimated by the coronavirus, uh, they're asking for the richer countries to cancel the debt repayments. Um, if you'd like to sign the petition, please go to the Christian Aid website uh, and follow all the links that are there. Uh, the second thing is uh, in relation to, to money, as well as the uh, debt uh, cancellation. Um, just to say thank you to those of you who've uh, put your giving through the, uh, your banks rather than through not the envelope scheme. Obviously, it's difficult for everyone to, to get the envelopes through to the church at this time. But thank you to those of you who have and given that way. If you still want to give via your bank rather than through envelope, please do get in touch with me or with uh, Christine McGrath and we can give you the, the details of how to uh, get your, your uh, bank transfer set up. So uh, without any uh, further uh, end notices, uh, I hand over to Mike Acaster and I pray that through this time, that God would meet all of us uh, at this time of need uh, with his plenty. So Mike, over to you. Thank you, Mark. In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, we read, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion for whom no one cares. We continue in prayer. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the people of God, but Scripture reminds us that we still sin and we need to confess our failures knowing that the Lord Jesus intercedes for us with the Father, who freely forgives us through his infinite goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 we read, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. And also in 1 John 1 verse 9 we read if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness amen our opening song now what a beautiful name so if you'd like to pause the recording go back to the website and use the link there we can join together in singing what a beautiful name. Well, welcome back. I'm going to hand over to Mark now, who's going to bring us our reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 16, I think, Mark, or 15. Yes, it's, it's Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Uh, we read... Peter and John were going up into the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. A certain man 
who was lame from his mother's womb, was being carried, whom they laid daily at the door of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask gifts for the needy of those who entered into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive gifts for the needy. Peter fastened his eyes on him with John and said, Look at us. He listened to them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, that I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. He took him by the right hand and raised him up. Immediately, his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Leaping up, he stood and began to walk. He entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognised him, that it was he who used to sit begging for gifts for the needy at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. As the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. When Peter saw it, he responded to the people, You men of Israel, why do you marvel at this man? Why do you fasten your eyes on us? as though by our own power or godliness we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he determined to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, to which we are witnesses. By faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is through him has given him this perfect soundness, in the presence of you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now back to you, Mike. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> so here we are moving on from the events of Easter to an event in the life of the early church when Peter and John go to pray in the temple in Jerusalem and they're accosted on their way in by a lame beggar. It's a story that gives rise to a wonderful children's song, Silver and Gold Have I None, that I can recall singing as a youngster. But the beggar calls out asking for alms as they enter the temple through the beautiful gates where the beggar is sitting. And this gives Peter the opportunity to talk about Jesus, which he does without hesitation. And I'm sure many of us have experienced opportunities that we might have had to have talked about Jesus with our friends or our family. But we never quite seemed quick enough. The words didn't come easily. It was only later that we were kicking ourselves thinking this is what I should have said. Well, for those of you that are struggling, here is a wonderful example of how to go about sharing Jesus with others. We have here Peter's template as to how to go about sharing Christ. Whilst for most, most of us, this may not follow a miraculous healing as it does here, 
I think there is still much that we can learn from this passage. And while we may not have as much opportunity to do so face to face currently, we can always strengthen our spiritual muscle through studying God's word in the meantime. So let's look at that template. Firstly, Peter says the healing wasn't done by them. He goes to great lengths to make that clear. He says, why do you fasten your eyes on us as though by our own power or godliness we have made him walk? But it was through Jesus, the servant of God, that the man was healed. Therefore, all the glory is rightly given to Jesus for this miracle. So what we say and do, we should never claim the glory for ourselves, but should always give that glory to Jesus. Secondly, Peter stresses that Jesus was not some self-appointed Messiah, but rather he was sent by God. He reminds them that Jesus is the son or servant of God, their God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac and of their fathers. This was somebody who was without sin, yet these very same people called for his crucifixion whilst they asked for a murderer to be set free. This Jesus, whom they had rejected and crucified, was raised up from the dead by God. And it is through faith in this same Jesus Christ that the lame man had been healed. Thirdly, Peter says, Christ came into this world that we might be saved through the sacrifice of the Holy and Righteous One whom they had killed. We are reconciled with God. We know from Christ's teachings that he was to be a once and for all sacrifice to wash away our sins. And Peter reminds the crowd that they were the ones that put Jesus to death. And we must also recognize our own contribution through sin to that death. So the template here that Peter gives us to talking to others about Jesus is quite clear. Give the glory to God. Tell them who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And lastly, confront them with their sin. Oswald Chambers summarized it this way. Jesus Christ became incarnate for one purpose, to make a way back to God that man might stand before him as he was created to do, the friend and lover of God himself. The passage also sparks a couple of other thoughts. The lame man was begging outside the temple gate. He was one of the least of their society, one of the excluded by his affliction from going into the temple. The beautiful gate, what a wonderful name. It describes something that was a wonder to behold, maybe. But it was a barrier to him. And I wonder what physical or metaphorical barriers we might put up that keep the least, the have-nots, the vulnerable in our society out. The man was begging for alms, which to the Jews was not just some token as we might do or we might think of it. It's not just a few coppers in the beggar's hat or cup. It goes much further than that. It stems from a sense of obligation, that of Zadaka, which was more that sense of a moral or ethical duty to do something to help the poor. So much more of an obligation than perhaps our current society sees it. Perhaps stemming for, from the view that prosperity and wealth was essentially a loan from God and the vulnerable, therefore, those that were the least in society, had some right to call on a portion of that wealth that the prosperous were lucky to enjoy in that loan from God. 
And it's heartening that during this pandemic here and elsewhere, we can see volunteers, food charities like Fair Share and the Trussell Trust, helping many with their food needs at this time. And it's good that the retailers are also getting involved in helping the vulnerable and the disadvantaged, the least in our society. But when they're under pressure from getting food because they can't go out, or they've lost all of their income, there is some support available for them to help them cope with this situation that all of us are finding difficult to deal with. It's interesting, even the pundits on the news programs are now talking about a reevaluation of what is key to society that we have come to enjoy. And that perhaps in future there might be a rebalancing in favour of some of those lowest paid workers and vulnerable workers on whom it turns out we are reliant for our basic necessities. Time will tell. Unfortunately, we can all have very short memories when the going becomes good again. And I pray that that is not the case here. The lame man only expected arms, probably money, possibly food. But what he got was much more than he bargained for. Peter says, look at me. Now, most of us probably don't look at a beggar, even if we're going to give them money. More likely, we avoid eye contact and hurry past them. Peter says it is through faith that this lame man was healed. Is that why he was looking straight into his face? Was he seeking evidence of faith? Was he just treating him as an equal? Who knows? The implication in the reading is that the lame man did have faith in Jesus Christ. If you look at the end of the reading that Mark brought to us this morning. But Peter takes him by the hand and the once lame man gets up and starts leaping and praising God. The healing in the name of Jesus is not just using the name as an incantation. True, names have a power and authority. If we watch some of the old films in medieval times, we see people knocking at the door, open up in the name of the king. So names can have a power and authority that give right to access. But here, Peter is using it to give the glory back to the Messiah. The lame man only wanted a few coins. That was probably all his experience had taught him to expect. And here he is, healed, no longer a cripple. How often do we do the same sort of thing? We limit God's ability to bless us because it is beyond our imagining, but thankfully not beyond his. The temple was an expensive building, elaborate, and thought of as the only place where God dwelt. The healing happened outside the temple. So God was no longer confined to just a part of the temple complex, no long, longer separated by a thick, heavy curtain that was torn in two on Christ's crucifixion, removing that barrier between God and man so that we are no longer separated and excluded from his presence. Nor is Christ's message only for the Jews or the Gentiles, but is for all who believe in him and recognize what he has done to reconcile us with God. I sometimes wonder if people today think that God only dwells in our churches. And I know many of us see God everywhere in the beauty of his creation. And I'm glad that we have a building where we normally meet to worship God. We are blessed in that regard. And I know we have issues with our roof. And uh, the roof needs fixing so the rain doesn't come through. But I also wonder about the portion of our budget going to the building and that going to share in God's word with the community. But I think that's a topic for another day.
Lastly, we worship a powerful and wonderful Savior who heals and restores us, just as he did with the lame man. Notice, too, that restoration was to something greater than before. It was restoration to a fully functional body. Once healed, the lame man's disability was no longer there to exclude him from entering the temple. The beautiful gate was no longer a barrier, excluding him from being part of his community. So at the time when we're all feeling excluded, particularly from meeting and worshiping as we would wish, let us not forget that there are those out there in society who are physically, emotionally, always excluded. The vulnerable and the least in our society. And whilst it may be hard going for us now, let us remember and give thanks that we worship a risen Saviour in Jesus Christ who can and does restore us to wholeness and renews us afresh. Jesus Christ, come with your healing power, restore us to health, restore our community, plant in us seeds of hope for a brighter, fairer, more balanced future. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. Lord, at this time, we pray for those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus. Grant them the strength to fend off the virus. For the doctors and the nurses, we thank you for their dedication and ask that you protect and guide them in supporting their patients so that more can survive the infection. We thank you for all those in the various supply chains to ensure that we have food in the stores to buy, that that important personal protective equipment is available where it is needed. We thank you for all the unsung heroes who are supporting the elderly and vulnerable in our community. And Lord, we pray that the virus outbreak is brought under control so that some sense of normality and certainty returns. We ask these things not for our own sake, but in your name and for your glory. Amen. So shall we turn to our closing song? And I know many of you have turned to Psalm 91 at this time. So I thought it would be good to sing, Whom Shall I Fear? The God of Angel Armies. If you'd like to pause, go back to the website and use the link there. I'll see you once we've sung God's praises. Shall we pray? Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>